Essential Mix. So please welcome onto the hallowed turntables for the Essential Mix this week. It's Pendulum. Hey, my name is Gautaman, or people on Reddit might know, might know me as Asian Ronin, and I'm up on some other sites as GTXX. Uh, I'm actually trying to switch to Asian Ronin right now, because uh, a lot of other people use GTXX, and yeah, well, anyways, that's beside the point. What I want to show you guys today is my, it's a tutorial on how to render grass, and it came about of me trying to model this thing right here. This is from a series called Doctor Who. It's a British series that goes on the BBC. It's actually on Netflix and uh, whatever. Anyways, this is the TARDIS, which is just a police box and there's a whole explanation on how that happened. But the doctor uses this to travel through time. And I figured this would be a cool project for me to do on Blender. I, w I learned how to use Blender back in high school, which was like two or three years ago. And yeah, I, I make it sound like it's like centuries ago, but not two or three years ago. And uh, for a while, I completely stopped using Blender because, well, honestly, I didn't like it that much. But then I saw how much it matured, and now I'm back into it, especially with cycles. And I figured, hey, this will be a cool project to do, and it should be simple, right? Well, let me give you a quick rundown. What I did was I started, I truly started this like two years ago, I believe. And I believe either that or summer of last year, I don't remember. But I started it, it was really complicated, it made me turn my hair out. And after a while, I completely forgot about it. And then this winter break, or winter break of 2010, I decided to uh, see how, you know, see what I can do. And I found out that for some reason the files were deleted. I don't know what I did, I might have accidentally deleted, but they were gone. So I decided to start from scratch, and in starting from scratch, oops, let me just open this up. Oh, actually, you know what? I don't need to do that. Starting since I started from scratch, this is this has been the final render I did. This, uh, let's see, uh, all of this I did in a month, and uh, I mean I should go to uh, this close up, but this is like the first render I had, which was. Uh, at the beginning of, I believe, December or November, somewhere around there. And I kept going through, and these are all the different ones, and this was a weird one. And this is the last render. And someone on Reddit, I forgot their name, I'm sorry, but they asked me how I made this grass, and I felt like this would be a great opportunity for me to make a tutorial. My first tutorial, actually. Well, technically my first video tutorial. So, that's what I'm doing right now, guys, on grass. Yay. So, one of the things I had in mind for this project since the beginning was making the environment, because I wanted not just a TARDIS model, I wanted an environment behind it. And I had this whole idea of, I want some crazy looking grassy patches and shit like that. Well, no, I just wanted a meadow. And that was my first few renders. But anyways, this is pretty much the basic idea of what I had for the meadow, like hilly stuff, and grass, and so on. And one of the things that that inspired me was, um, let me see if I can figure out. Yes, this right here. This, I believe this is the same one, um, it might not be, actually yeah it is, okay. This is what, I forgot the guy's name, Andrew something, he did the grass for, um, well he had this awesome grass tutorial, but it was part of something called the Nature Academy, which you had to pay money for, and I'm not exactly that wealthy right now, I have some money, but I'm not gonna go into that, anyways, on top of that, I'm also kind of a guy like, like a torrent, it's not, not nothing I'm proud of, but, again, I couldn't find any tutorials on this. But I figured, hey, you know what? I'm creative. I could probably figure out something of how to do something like this by myself. So, you know, the first thing I decided to do was I looked around for, you know, something simple. Blender grass tutorial. 
and th there are a few stuff on there. Some of them are actually based off of Andrew's own uh, nature, whatever video thing. And people, they were generally helpful, but sometimes it seemed like, I don't know, people were skipping steps or I, I don't know exactly. But anyways, I was going through that. Now, in this one, you can't really see it, but all the grass is, it's just planes. All I did was I made like four or five different, um, let me show you what I did. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's awesome having a quad core computer because I can just be like, I'm just gonna open up another thing of Blender. Don't give a crap. Alright, so this is what happens when you make. Alright. Sorry, the reason that thing was there is uh, I was trying to make, make new settings for Blender and I forgot to make sure that there was nothing on the viewport. But essentially, what I did. It's like a larger version, but I just got a plane. You take the plane, and then actually, let me, okay. So uh, what I did was I enabled the screencast keys. Um, if you guys want to know real fast, it's you have to go into user preferences, add-ons, 3D view, and in screencast keys, right here. Just enable that, and voila, you have this, and then you get to see all the stuff. Okay, anyways. Um, Okay, so to make the plane, those grass planes that I showed before, all I have to do is extrude this out. Oops, make sure it's on the Y axis. And let me get rid of this for So yeah, extrude this out. Yet again, delete those vertices. Delete those vertices. Wow. All right, let me just start this over from the beginning. So, uh, you should probably be in the front view. Get rid of all that. Front view, add a plane, rotate it, X90, not rotate it, X90, oops, rotate it, X90. So now the grass, the bottom of the grass blade is pretty much facing you. Drag this up. It doesn't have to be exact. I'm just, you know, going by this real fast. And by the way, it's, it's pretty big right now. You can see because, you know, I, I go by each one of these boxes as one meter. Uh, that's what I've heard a lot of other people say. I kind of messed that up on the Blender project. I mean, on the TARDIS project because I went as each of these boxes as being 0 0.001 meters for some reason. Bad idea. Oh well. But it's generally good if you go by this being one meter, especially if you're going to do simulations such as wind or water simulations. Having each of these boxes as one meter means the simulation will run a lot easier and it will be a little bit more realistic. Okay, anyway, so just select those two. E, um, see it's, it's already making it locked to the Z axis. So just keep on doing that a couple of times so that it has, you know, whatever and then you have this and this is all I left it as to make those it's it was just that just much smaller a lot a lot a very lot smaller anyways so from there I kept on going and then these again all you can see it kind of I just shaped them out a little bit and then I finally got to this then whatever the hell this is, to that, and then this is this was my final render. Actually no, this was my last, the last render I did that was successful. It looked all right. Um, some people have wondered what this gloopy stuff here is. This is me trying to do a water simulation, and as you, this was really frustrating, and it still is. I'm actually thinking of completely getting rid of this, but I really want a waterfall. So I'm like, I don't know what the hell to do right now. So yeah. Also it's that color because I set the color to like this really light blue and the lighter I set it, the darker it got on here for some reason. So yeah, I, I need to fix that. So anyways, what I want to show you guys is how to make this kind of grass. And uh, this is my first Blender tutorial. Like, well, this is my first screencast, video tutorial, whatever. And I'm a talkative person. So if I talk a lot, I'm sorry. But I just do that. 
And right now I'm talking to my computer screen, which is not telling me to shut up, so I will end up talking a lot. I'm sorry. So anyways, one of the first things I did, uh, well, this was actually the first thing I did. I made a bunch of these. So let's uh, go back to this. And I'm going to make these kind of big. But let's delete this for now. Because the first thing you want to do is you want to add a plane. And if you have, right now I'm running Blender 2.61 with, actually, let me switch to Cycles because uh, Cycles is fun. Anyways, I'm running 2.61. I got this from Graphic All. Uh, if you guys don't know where Graphic All is, just Graphic All. I'm using Google Chrome, by the way. And if you guys are like, yeah, he likes Google Chrome. It's all right, I'm a Firefox dude, but my Firefox has like a shit ton of tabs open right now, so I don't feel like going through those. So let's just go back to this. So here, Graphical. And you get all these options. Just click on Windows if you have Windows. You know, you get all the different options. So I got Windows and um, this is good enough. You can see on here it's for, it's for Windows, it's 64-bit, it's experimental, it's not optimized, and it's Blender. You know, you can get other shit too, you can get GIMP, whatever, Lux. I'm actually switching, thinking about switching to Lux, because uh, Cycles is very, very, very immature. That's a horrible term, but it's not a mature program, and neither is Lux Blender, but Lux, I mean Lux Render, but Lux Render is a lot more mature compared to Cycles. The only reason why I like Cycles is because I can render in Blender, and I don't have to worry about anything. Uh, if you guys don't know what Cycles is yet, I can do that with Cycles. And it's actually rendering that. And this is all an unbiased rendering, so it looks really good. For that, for a piece of grave, whatever the hell that is. So anyways, uh, the one that I have right now, I believe is, um, actually I think it's just this, with the Cycles volume patch. Uh, might be, might not be. So yeah, just, actually no, mine's optimized for whatever, I don't know, it's optimized for something. But uh, it's this one right here, fastest with CUDA support, I, I have an ATI HD4870 card, so I can't use the GPU, which sucks, but whatever. So anyways, let's get back to this. So I have 2.6.1 and 2.6, sorry, has a cool, other cool feature called, let's have this Another cool feature where you can add object, add mesh, and you can do landscape. And if you do landscape, there we go. So you get these options on the side. And you know, landscape is cool. You can subdivide it more. You can make the mesh too big. And you can make the mesh 100 and you get this, which isn't that cool. Go down to like 50. Yeah, the thing about landscape is I feel like you get better landscapes when you make the mesh like insanely small. But that's also because it's being subdivided more. So if I did like a hundred, then I should probably subdivide it. Like I'm, I'm hoping to dear God this doesn't crash right now. Uh oh. That might have been a bad idea. Yeah. Yeah, if you guys are looking, my uh, vertices just jumped to 2,500. Yeah, that's, that's not good. It's not good at all. But you still get, you know... And this is one of, those, well, yeah, one of the reasons I don't like landscape is the second you click out of it, that's it. I, I don't think you can edit this anymore. So let's just delete that because that's not what we want. So let's just take this and let's just make a simple landscape. So bring it out a little bit. Tab, 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 or not tab. There you go. Select all your edges. Subdivide. Subdivide, 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 subdivide. Uh, subdivide one more time. Okay. So that's cool. Now, uh, if you guys have been used to editing, this right here, it's called uh, proportional editing. It essentially means if I select this, a certain 
you know you can set the area but all the stuff around it is gonna move proportionally and you can you know choose a smooth a sphere blah 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 okay uh, I usually go with smooth for now I start off with smooth then I realize smooth is the wrong option but the first thing you should do is press G and you see this circle around here I hope you guys can see it but that circle pretty much shows you how much is being affected. If I um, scroll down, the circle gets bigger. If I scroll up, the circle gets smaller. And you can kind of see the the vertices are in the circle moving every time I do this. And if I make it bigger, and whee! okay, but anyways, actually, yeah, smooth is pretty good for you know making the basic hill structure. And the other thing I realized is after you make the hill structure, you realize a lot of stuff isn't visible to the camera anymore. And you don't really need it there, so you can get rid of it. For instance, my camera is right here. So let me actually get out of here. If I press zero, okay, that's a bad example, but still, you can see like that area right behind the hill right there, you really don't need. And you can save some processing time, rendering time, whatever, some space by getting rid of parts of this unless you have something important here but usually most stuff I have here is grass so you can get rid of it and it's fine if you guys have you know touched into game design you know that's known as culling it's like manual culling I don't know if blender has culling enabled they usually renders don't because you know there's really no need to and these are my wavy hills. Wow, that was a bad idea. Yeah, so whenever you press G, it's a good idea to lock to the Z axis so you don't get weird shit like hills going sideways. Now, I could make this sandy. That would, that would be nice. Anyways, so let's just leave it at that. That's fine. And I can go into my materials. Add whatever here. Let me go into here and make sure this is round. Um, I'm not the kind of person who likes to label things. You know, whenever I use with Photoshop, I usually have like a hundred or so layers of just layer one, layer one copy, layer one copy two, so forth, and it's no big deal for me. But with Blender, it's it's a really good idea to start labeling things, just because it, it makes it easier, and it's a lot simpler. Plus, it's very easy to label things in Blender. Anyway, so let's just make this diffuse, and oh, let me show you guys something. Um. I use two sides, but is it cooler? No, it's cooler. It's cooler. Adobe. Com. This site is mainly meant for like web designers and stuff like that. But hell, this is a really easy way to get colors. And you know, you search something random, and you, you can get. Look at this. I get. I got my texture for my green grass right now. But let's just go with something like this. You click on here. See, these are the colors click on here and you get the hex values for the colors and that's what you need a oh, cool unrelated story I'm in a A plus right in an A plus testing class right now and I just learned that hex is actually like a translation of binary or something like that I don't know I just figured I'd put it in there to sound like a smart ass oh well. so uh, let's just put this over two and right here, if I show you the render, let's go back here and make this. So, there we go. Now, ain't that cool? Now again, I don't have a GPU, so I know there have been some videos of people posting up. Oh man, check out how quickly this render is. Blah blah. Well, you know what? I don't have a GPU. I have to stick with my very old, very old quad core. So yeah. So yeah, set the ground as smooth, blah blah blah. Uh, let's get out of this. I try not to keep it in that for too long because um, I actually like to work on things. And that rendering while my GPU, while I'm trying to edit, it kills my CPU. So there's no need for that. Okay, so now let's start with the grass. So for the grass, Zoom in a lot, add object, plane, rotate it on the x axis by 90 degrees. 
and it's always a good idea to have some sort of reference like size wise so I'm gonna just bring this out a little bit and out a lot bit let's make it really small really really small this is pretty much how I did it if you guys have a better way of doing it you know be my guest have fun don't again this is just an instruction on how I got my look and you guys can easily find your own ways around it so anyways the first thing I said was you know the first things I did was extrude this out a couple of times so you have like that right there Oops. Oh, I hate when it does this Okay, so the next thing I did was I went out here and grab that blade. Images. And you know, you just want something that's okay. You just want like, you don't have to do this, but it's always a good idea so you have an understanding of what it's supposed to look like. Now, this is really good if you want to get pretty detailed with the grass blade. But. I knew the grass in my thing wasn't going to be like the main attraction, you know, it was going to be like, another thing I did was meadow, so you guys can see this. I can go further in and show you guys how to do the other stuff, but this is basically a meadow, and you know the grass isn't that detailed, it's just green stuff sticking out of the ground. So let's go back, and actually this is the image I worked off of this right here and I made these three things and let's see if I can actually get something that's useful I actually want to make some pretty looking grass this time around you know what, whatever Go to full size image, and one of my favorite things to use is snipping tool. If you guys have been freaking out that oh my god, I need to get a screen capture tool or whatever, a screenshot tool, this one built into Windows 7 and Windows 8. Don't know about like Vista though. So rectangular snip, and I'm just gonna get that right there. Let's save that and hope that nothing crazy comes up. Grass. I love that grass. Alright. So the next thing you do is get rid of that, press N to print this out, go to background image, add an image, open, go around my desktop, grass. Okay, that's very too big. So let's bring the size down to something. is set at zero. Alright, there we go. Point one is actually a good size. And let's take this up. Oops. Yeah, I had to do that a lot when I had to figure out what small number can I use to make this project work. And it came out to pretty small numbers. Okay. So, now you can look at this and try and figure out how many of these different things you want to do. Um, I'll just stick with two to make life easy. So, make a second copy of this, put it off to the side. So, the next thing is just tap this out, go into this. You know, press Z to so you can see through everything. Oh, make sure you're off proportion proportional editing. Hmm. 
Okay, one of the things you want to remember is, especially if you don't have a powerful computer, you want to try and minimize the number of vertices you're using. So, I'm... Especially for editing. Now, you can always subsurf this and go in later. And, you know... I mean, what I mean by later is you can always just add make the subsurfs for the render high and then for the preview just leave it something low because again you're not going to be admiring how beautiful your grass is on your on your uh, viewport you'd rather do that when you actually render the damn thing so try and keep the vertices as low as possible while you're working on it and this will help you what's it called this will help make sure okay now again as you can see this is kind of a I did this a really weird way but you gotta do what you gotta do and when you have this you just subdivide between the two things and you know it kind of tends to be a little ugly because of this right here and you can always delete the edge delete that edge Subdivide. Um, personally, I don't mind triangles, but I feel like triangles add become very painful when you start to do. Oops, when you start to do something like uh, when you start to do um, UV mapping. For me, triangles are painful aspect are one of the most painful aspects of UV mapping. Actually, this is pretty bad having something like that but whatever I want to reduce the amount of vertices so I'm just gonna stay with that and that's fine for now now actually let me just do this before I tell you anything else so again do this crap don't bring it and, and this stuff can honestly get kind of tedious for me, I, I worked on this during um, during my winter break, and it was my way of staying away from drugs and you know robbing people and stuff like that. It's good. You know, if you have a kid, you want them to stay away from drugs or robbing people. Introduce them to Blender, and then you will never see them leave their room ever again, which is good. You know. The internet has awesome shit. Okay, anyways, so this is pretty much what I got. And, you know, try to make sure they're all, again, as you can see, it's just a line. Try to make sure they're flat so you don't make it too weird. And always, always, always make sure you put the origin properly because sometimes that tends to fuck things up. So click it right there and then open this side up origin origin to 3d cursor i want that because i want the origin right at the bottom right there i don't want the origin up here i want it to off to the side no i want it right there in the middle okay. make sure it's right there make sure the correct object is selected and then origin to 3d cursor again if you know for a fact that the origin is not going to affect anything then go ahead you know do whatever you want but for me, I feel like the origin affects how the object is duplicated on the on the ground object. Okay, anyways, now to make this a little bit more pretty. So, I can just stick right here. Let's go to here, add a subsurf. For you. And I'm going to display because I don't want to see all that crap. Let's take the view. Let's put it to three. Alright, that's pretty good. That looks like something. Um, if you press Control R, you you get that, which is um, I, I believe it's called a loop cut, which lets you add another loop to whatever the hell it is. So you, know, you drag it closer to the edge, and you get a much more defined edge like that. Without that, it kind of looks like a little tiny thingy. Let's keep on going up. Then I can make another one right here to make that 
that edge sharper. And you know, grass blades aren't always so sharp, but which also, which is also good for the, which is also why I like subsurfing after because it makes the grass look a, look a little bit more realistic. You don't have to make this edge flat. I just like to, because I don't know, I like that. But you don't have to, because that edge usually will not be seen. Okay, depending on how powerful your computer is, you might want to be careful with adding loops, because as you can see, it adds a lot more vertices. And something else I like to do is select it all, press W, and move doubles, because sometimes a loop cut likes to, you know, sometimes you forget and add too many loop cuts or something like that. So, there you go. That's for that. Do the same thing here. Modifier, sub blah, blah, blah. subdivide, put it three optimal. Okay, I actually forgot to do something. I'll, I'll do it when I'm done with this. Okay, that's fine. What I forgot to do was see the render is set at two, but I need three on the, on the view to make it look right. So I should probably set the render to three or a box. I'll just put it to four. Same on here. Now I can bring the view down to like one. And now, you know, if, you, if you're paying attention to my uh, vertice counter right there, when I set this up, my vertices start going up, and you don't, you know, you don't want too many vertices in your view. Actually, just put it to zero and you're better off. There you go. Just set that to zero. Okay. Next thing I want to do is oh, go back here. Turn proportional editing, editing on again, and put this to something like sphere. And go back, press B to do this tool, or you can use C to do circle select, which will give you more control. Because uh, B is box select, so you have to make a box. But with C, you can kind of you know, paint around what vertices you want to choose. Pull down G, and again, you can see I'm moving the pull down thing. So scroll, keep on scrolling up. And, ooh, that looks cool. Yeah, scroll up a little bit so you get that. And then, you know, you can start, you, you're essentially bending it. Um, let me get rid of this. Okay. Essentially bending this out a little bit and, you know, rotate it because if it's bending out it's not going to just be like some weird static bending thing it's going to be rotated out you can also do something else known as um go to modifiers and you can do a curve which deforms or you can do a simple deform but simple deform can mess up you know, well here we can do bend and But the problem with bend is it can get kind of weird. Yeah, see, it can get kind of weird. So we're not going to use bend. But again, it's helpful, but it's it's weird. But um, the other one is curve. The thing about curve is, see this object right here? You can make it a um, what's it called? this thing, an actual, oops, you can make it a actual curve, and then, what you know, whatever curve you choose, you can make the curve, what the path of the curve you want, the, the path you want this thing to curve in, and you can set that as a modifier, just make sure you apply the modifier before you duplicate it, because uh, one of the things I've noticed is, when you start duplicating things that have modifiers on it, it starts eating up your RAM, so you don't want that. So anyways, this way I just prefer because it gives you a lot more control. And on top of that, it's, it's also a lot simpler. It seems more, I don't know, more tedious, but that's how these things are, you know. 
they seem more tedious, but then you're like, oh man, it's actually pretty simple. Whatever. So let's make that bend that way, and let's make this guy. Oops, make sure you have the correct vertices selected. Let's make this guy. Well, actually, this guy probably wants to bend the same way. You know, you, you kind of start learning about how leaves are supposed to bend, and I don't know, maybe there's a major in that somewhere. Actually, honestly, there probably is. I've, I've gone into a series called Bones, and after watching that, I feel like, damn, there is a frigging major for everything. It really is. And, you know, something you can do is you can select the bottom part and you can rotate it on the z-axis which gives it, actually this is something I should have done in the other model because it gives it, makes it a little more realistic because plants usually don't, I mean grass usually doesn't grow just straight, it kind of curves sometimes because you know what, it friggin can, it's grass, it doesn't give a shit what you think. Alright, well that's good enough. Something else I did after that, oh, uh, you might want to go in and set these to smooth, and see that weird shit right there? Select it all and press control N to fix your normals. Same here, set this to smooth, and just in case, fix your normals. Okay, it doesn't look that smooth, but again, my, uh, get rid of that. If I do the subdivision by 4, it actually looks like it could be a leaf. Maybe not. And the other thing I like to do is... Where is it? This is something I figured out later on. If you add a bevel in there... You know, it kind of makes it a little bit more... Actually, no, not bevel. Um, go in here and you do a solidify. Which is meant for architectural uses, but... It's actually awesome at what it does it, it, it kind of gives it a 3d because right now your grass is a flat 2d plane and one thing you learn from physics is in reality there are no such things as 2d planes or at least 2d physical objects it just doesn't happen so you need a little bit of thickness everything has some sort of thickness so you can add it to the big thickness you, know, you can make it in some insane amount but you just want to give this a tiny bit of thickness These, these aren't doing shit, so I don't care. Uh, I'm calling them all. We don't want it to be even thickness. This kind of just offsets. Whatever. Okay. Right. I can. You can put it wherever. If you put it above the subsurf, that means it's gonna start subsurfing that. That you know. The. It'll subsurf the, the solidify too, which probably will look better. So let's just leave it at that. Uh, let's do the same thing for this. Uh, modifier. Where are you? Solidify. Let's have a little more. Remove the different numbers and quality. And whatever. Okay. So that's good enough. And if you guys know about these, you know you can probably go in here and start giving your if you know how each leaf is going to look, you can make some parts of it even, I don't know, you don't really need that, but you can. Like, say, uh, if you want parts of the leaf to be eaten away, you can, wherever that part's going to be, you can make it a vertex group, put it in here, and make that area a lot thinner, but you can probably do it faster and less complex using something like um, image maps or something like that, you know? Like alpha maps, there we go use those. Alright, so we'll just leave these like this. So, now, I don't know, I need to see the ground. Let's go to the ground, oh, oops, my phone. Go back here, go into these again, select these two, and I believe it's control G, yes, to make a group, name it grass. No, I'm not going to do that. I was going to put grass in a winky face, but no, it's, it's too complicated. Okay. Let's just go back so into this properly. Actually, let me make this a little bit smaller. So, yeah, there we go. Um, 
this one. Um, if you guys have done any, you know, if you guys know what HDR maps are, you guys should really start using them because, you know, this shit just looks a lot better when you have HDR maps. And for some reason, I can't add them. Right, there we go. So it's always a good idea to have HDR maps, which I can't add for some reason. What the hell? Alright, whatever, you know what? I'm not gonna look into that. Okay. Let's just go back to ground. Now, with the ground selected, what you wanna do is do particles. Press particle system, grass. Okay. Now, Blender has a lot of options when it comes to its particle system, which is good. It's good. But. A problem with cycles and many other unbiased renders is, well, with particles you get this other option called hair, and oops, need to fix that. You just saw all my hair coming out the wrong way. That means all these normals are flipped the wrong way, or that the whole damn thing is flipped the wrong way. So yeah, apparently that's okay. Hmm. Need to fix that. Let's see. Gee. There we go. Normals are correct. Or at least for what whatever. The problem is you see all these hairs and this is visible in the viewport, but the second I switch to the renderer, they're, they're gone. You know, if I go back to material without this crashing actually. Yeah. And I go to Blender render and I render this in here. Oh well it looks beautiful. Um Yeah I don't know why that didn't work. Probably because oh yeah that's why. See, you can actually see all those hairs. It's fine. It, I, I believe it takes the. No, it just. It has its own material, which is nothing. But with anything else, it's not gonna work fine. So, you know, if you did it hair, if hair worked properly with other renderers, you could actually make the grass strands off of hair. And there are a lot of options that I'm not going to get into it, but you can't. So your next best option is, and I like to use hair just because I feel like the hair, the, what you have on here, the properties for hair make more sense to me for some reason. But either way, I like to click on advanced, which gives you all the options for um, for emitter too. But again, you can stick with emitter because it's the same thing. I'm, I'm just weird. So anyways, go to advanced. And you want to go, here, let me close on this first. So I can show you what to start off with. The first thing you want to do is you gotta go to not display render, and in render you get all these options of it renders nothing, it renders the path, which you know this is the path of the hair. It renders an object. So now if you had one object that you want to put on here, you can add the object, and that's the first thing I did when I had like five or six different strands or blades of grass I actually had each one of them assigned to its own particles particle em emitter or particle system for the ground plane which I liked because it gave me a lot more control over each strand but then I was like or each blade but then I was like why the hell do I care and you know it also ate up a lot of RAM so I'm like nope don't need that so the other option is group and with group you can actually assign a whole group. I remember we just made a grass group. So if you click on here, you click on grass, and oh wow, look at that! That looks freaking ridiculous. Um, when you have a lot, again, right here, right now, I don't have a lot of things going on, so it's fine. It's only using 145 megs, but I still like to change this. If you go to display, you can render path, but just go to rendered and put this down to like 10. 
So you see 10% of all the things that are shown. And you know, 100% is fine, but again, that looks like some freakish crazy grass over there. So let's again put this down to. Actually, let's put this down to like 8. 5. Sorry. And. Okay, let's go back to render. And you can use a whole group of at once. Pick random. I just like to pick random. Yeah, use global. Use the global rotation so it's like. As, as long as you. As long as when you make the first grass strand, it's pointing up, as in the z axis, it's up and it's not like flat on the ground or something, it'll be fine. What I mean by that is. This, for the ground right now, I chose the z-axis as up and down. And I did that same thing for the grass blades. The top of the grass and the bottom of the grass go along the z-axis. But if you did something else, such as you flip the grass... Uh, let me actually show you. If I, I have the one of the grass planes selected right now. If I go this way and... Uh, I can't figure out which one. Rotate it along the x and... these. I don't know what I just did. I'm just gonna not shut up right now. Anyways, I chose global, so it just knows which way the z-axis is. If not, it kind of kind of twists around and stuff. Anyways, I like to keep that safe because if I mess with the thing again, it won't do anything. Also, you can choose which material you want for this. Okay. Now the size, again as you can see, the size of the grass is, whoa it's massive, is controlled by this right here. Yeah, you can make it a little bit random. That's way too small. So let's put it back to 0.0. 0 0.005 seems like a better amount. It still seems a little too big for me, but whatever. If I go into display and put this to 100%, again, you can see it's not covering the whole area. So let's put this down to 10%. And now we go to children. Oh, these, these, this thing is fun to play with. So children pretty much means for each of these strands, these are the parents, there will be so many more extra ones but the difference is that with children they're technically not there what that means is even though in these ones you can see these and you will be able to see the children too the children are like they're like copies or like virtual copies of these and people use them to reduce ram usage because now i can have 50 million of these or i can have 5 million and or i could have i don't know 50 of them and then a million children each which still sounds horrible so I'm just gonna shut up okay. so right now render it's set up to for each one of these there'll be a hundred extra and it's only displaying 10 of each or 10% I should say and I should not have done that should not have done that yeah this is only displaying 10 for every parent, but in reality it's going to do 100, so let's take, let's just leave that at 100. And what I want to do is change this radius out, 0.5, actually let's change it high to 1. Is it going higher? Yes it does. The problem is when you start going higher you get weird shit like that. So let's just put it at 1. And you're still getting weird shit. And there's a way to fix that, but I completely forgot how to. Well, interpolated usually works a little bit better because interpolated isn't retarded. You can also make virtual parents, which again are like. See, for these. The children form around each parent, but you can have virtual parents, so the children start forming around other areas. Essentially, the children start forming around other children. 
And if you know how a family tree works, you might understand that. So let's set to virtual currencies to point one. Yeah. Some random seed. Blah 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 blah. Okay. Let's go back to the mission and set the number to um, five thousand. There we go. This probably will look a little bit better. But let's go back to render. I actually usually just like to set children to zero. So I don't get any crazy amount. Okay. Pure dynamics you really don't have to worry about. Let's put that to jittered. Um, this just makes it more random. And that's pretty much good. That's good enough. So there we go. That's that's that. So the next thing I'd like to do is that for each for both of these things I wanna make a grass no grass material and let's just keep it simple real fast. So let's just go back to here. I'm going back. Back texture of the grass. And that's a base, but I want something like this. For one. So let's make that for that, and then no, 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 come back. Let's get this for the second one. And you can see my computer is already kind of going a little like, dude, what the shit are you doing? Are you insane? Yes, yes I am. Deal with it. Okay, there we go. That's good enough. And I can, let me just save this just in case. Um, to save that is because um, things could mess up at any moment. Cycles render over. Um, I'm just leaving everything at normal right now because I don't really care. Uh, right. Let's just render that and see what happens. Oh, that's cool. It's gonna be a long ass tutorial. So, um, something I'd like to mention again is that I am rendering this on my CPU, which is also recording something. So, shit tends to go slow. Oh, nowhere at all. There we go. So, this is, as you can see, it's it's rendering now very slowly, but it, it's, it's doing it. No, I actually want to see, uh, yep, yeah, that's, that's beautiful. That's awesome right there. So I'll just look up. Oh, um, whoops, I forgot. That was on a different screen, but I just looked up, <laughs> I looked up my CPU usage, and that shit was pretty intense. It was, it was pretty out there. But yeah, as you can see, it's rendering, and it's it's rendering it pretty well. I don't have an environment like an HDR map on right now because for some reason it didn't want to work. So it seems a little dark, but whatever. So let's just stop this render right now. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so this is what I got from that blend, that render right there. No idea what the hell's going on right there. That's weird. But as you can see, it actually you know it looks looks pretty decent, and it looks like a grassy meadow. Of course, it looks a little repetitive. That that happens when you don't do any of the settings right. But you know it's fine. There's no problem. It actually rendered fine. It crashed once, but whatever. Now fix some of that that weird not looking right stuff. You can go into well, actually no, hair dynamics don't work. Um, it can go into uh, velocity and believe it or not, one but. change either but where is it oh there we go yeah you can change up the randomness a little bit and what is this no we don't want that oh this is always good if you want to do like i don't know this is the surface tangent so this kind of changes everything according to like the, the tangent of the surface and this is good for especially for like hills and stuff so you know if you set this to like ne like a slight negative it's good you don't want it to be too negative and then you know you can do a little bit of grass with this I mean not grass but you can make it look like there's wind blowing with this But again, you don't want to make it too high, because if you make it too high, it looks completely unrealistic. Or, like, there's a hurricane going on. That's fine, and then, you know, you can change this to normal. And you can get, like, a... But that's a normal, so you can also do, um, what is it? Probal Y, which is bad. Probal X. Probal Z doesn't do shit. Yeah, so, I'll just do that normal. The random up, oh. change the random up for this. The random up for the random for the phase. You can make it whatever, but fine. You add a little bit of randomness into it, and it gives you some extra thing. You know, it makes it a little, a little bit more normal. Brownian motion. If you guys don't know physics, Brownian motion is pretty much this guy looked at just stuff. He looked at I think uh, blood red blood cells. I'm not sure what it was, but the whole thing of Brownian motion is that everything around you is moving in some way even if it's a solid it's like it's vibrating at a very tiny little very tiny amount and it's good to have brownie especially if you kind of simulate something realistic brownie in motion gives it that extra little randomness that oh that looks like he just took a picture in some grassy area because everything has a slight movement and this adds that random you know you can you can see stuff but you know, and this brownie emotion just makes everything grow, I guess. But like, I, I like brownie emotion because it makes me think of that and it makes me go, okay. Everything has a little bit of extra randomness to it, and that's fine. I actually never. This is the first time I ever took that above two, and I did not realize it made things grow, which is cool. I put that point five. Uh, I believe Euler. Is Euler the more realistic one? It's either Euler or RK4 that's the more realistic one. Midpoint's alright, but I'm just gonna leave it at RK4. That's fine. And... Whoa, that's massive. Alright, display. Okay, the other thing you wanna do is, um, Put this to one or not. Just change these around a little bit so they're a little more random. Changing these around again. There's no like exact value for these because this is like 
it's it's kind of like just whatever looks good to you and for me i i never really found one that looked perfect for me it was me messing around and i was like oh that looks cool oh that looks cool oh that did that oh wow that didn't crash my computer all right cool so again it's whatever you want oh look at that the crash blender see like that's what i mean like if it ever crashes and i'm like okay i'm not gonna touch that ever again okay yeah let's go back to children some piece to ground them Okay, so you can do that, and um, another thing I learned, if you guys don't know this, is vertex groups, which is very helpful, so um, with the TARDIS, I had this issue when, uh, let me actually open the TARDIS model, oh, actually, I don't need to do that, uh, let me go back, here, I had this issue, which is more visible here, if you guys look down here, the, the grass was coming through the TARDIS, and it's kind of sad that this is actually after I fixed it. And this is another example is that wherever there was water, I'm pretty sure there wasn't going to be too much grass right on that area. So I needed a way to make sure the grass didn't grow there. And what I did, which is very helpful, is you make vertex groups. So hold down C. Let's not do something random like that. Um, hold down C and let's just select. Make this a little bigger. Let's select like something like that. Maybe that's like a path or something. I don't know. A very weird path through here. You select this. By the way, you hold C to get to this. Anyways, so you select this area and you can go into this part right here for the plane and you can add a vertex group. You add it and you call it, I don't know, a uh, path. And make sure it's assigned. And if I deselect it, no, it's, it's selecting that area. This is also a really good way to, you know, if you have an area of interest that you want to edit later on, you can make it a vertex group and you can come back and select it and only select that area. So, with that, I can go back here, go to vertex groups, and add it to, say, density. Density or length, whatever you want. Add to density and make sure this is clicked. When that's clicked, that means it's this affects density in some way and usually by zero this is yeah it negates it that's what it is or you can you know there you have a bunch of other options not too many options but you have the options you need and by doing that like, it's not really visible on here but let's say this again you can get uh i'm gonna render this for a bit and let's see how it comes out Alright, so um, this is a few minutes of, well, six minutes of rendering, and, well, something weird happened, but you can see the path I made right there, and um, I'm actually going to figure out what the hell happened right here, so let's go back, and um, let's see, let's see where this could have possibly messed up, and I believe it's the brownie in motion, so I'm going to get rid of that, and see if there's anything for children that might have affected it. Um, I, right now I don't think so, but we'll see. So, again, I'll see you in a bit, right after I finish rendering this. And, uh, actually, you know what, I'm gonna do something else, so... You can see the vertex group again, and you can select, and... They're at that point right there, so I'm gonna add a. Oh, I'm gonna add a. There we go. So let's find it. And right there, I'm gonna add an empty. And then I'm gonna add a constraint. Track to set empty. There's actually a way to do this, but it likes to mess up a lot.
There we go. And then you can go to... Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. But anyways... You can move this around now. So that it's, it's like, right on... See? It's a lot, it's a lot simpler. And I like to say local, which is easier to control the camera. Alright, so, in, in that point, I'm just gonna render this again. Uh, hopefully. It doesn't crash. Wish me luck, guys. So, um, this is another render. Uh, I realized why the lighting's all weird. I, I forgot to set to the sun again. But anyways, this looks pretty good. I actually like the way the grass looks. It looks like you're wa walking through some weird wilderness thing. So, you know, I'll just stop at that. Stop messing with the grass. At least the, the physical model of it. And I'll, I'll show you guys how I uh, did the... Did the... What's it called? The... Yeah, it's a point. How I did the... The texturing for it. Uh, let me see if I can make an environment map. Why isn't that working? It's so weird. I mean, that worked at one point before. Maybe it's because... Um, I don't care about that. That was weird. Alright, well, you know what? I'm just going to nodes. Stop it. There we go, that's what I was looking for. And make it an environment texture. Um, I actually got this, I get my environment textures from something called the OSCH HDRI and I got all these cool things. And um, let's just go to some random one. I actually have to be careful because uh, these are all different crazy types of um, crazy different types of HDRI images and uh, I'll show you a quick example let's go to nature my nature CD and if I bring it out here you can see there's a bunch of different ones light probe spherical map vertical cross blah 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 and the only one I know that works so far is spherical map maybe that maybe you know blender automatically recognize which what is what and it fixes it but I haven't tried anything else so um, by this, it's telling me LL is spherical map, so I'll go back in here and LP is in it. Let's see, nope, that's not it. There you go, LL. And um, you know what, I'm just going to choose a random one. I don't know what the hell, it, whoops, I should not have done that. That was a bad idea. But, <laughs> Nature CD, LL, while that's doing that, I'll just open something up. And one of the things I, I despise about cycles right now is you can't see what the hell your textures look like until you render it or you know look at it in the in the whatever viewer in this viewer. Or if I go to rendered, you know I get an idea, a basic idea of what the environment is going to look like, and it looks very deserty to me. So I like to set it linear, which to me looks better. So next thing I want to do is start messing with the actual material. So what I'm going to do is instead of showing the whole thing, I'm going to zoom into one of the planes and just show the plane. I was going to some really good uh, Pendulum right now, it's pretty cool. I love Pendulum. Okay, so just looking at this, everything looks pretty good. And again, I, I put the vertices and everything down to as low as possible so it will render faster. Let's go back into here. And one of the things I did is I started working with the node editor. 
which I've never worked with before, and this was the first, well I have, but like not out, not by myself. And it's pretty simple how it works, with, with Blender, I mean with Cycles anyways, because um, with normal Blender, you have so many options that it just kind of c confuses me, so I've never, yeah, there we go, that's what I was expecting to happen. Oh, okay, that's cool. It's grassy, it's fine. I guess this is mainly for if, you, if there was grass in that area, but whatever. So, with this, all it is is that this is what the material output is going to look like, and you know, the surface, and this is what the material is, and right now it's diffuse. So, we'll keep that there, but I want to add something called. Where is it? Not converter. No. Mix. I want to mix. Uh, oh wait, do I want to mix? Okay, there we go. Yeah, no, that's not what I want. Um, for all the different types of materials you can use, you go into shader. And what I want to do is a mix shader. There we go, that's what I wanted. And in mix, I can just... I'm going to put the mix right in the middle. And the other one that I usually bring in is... And uh, what I usually do is I have one mix shader, and then I have two more mix shaders added into that. Okay, this is pretty much how I made the grass in, let me show you. This grass here was made with what I'm showing you right now is I have two mix shaders going into one final mix shader that goes into the material output. And that one set at point, that mix shader is set at point 0.5, but these are going to be set to, I believe, point 0.2, and this one to point 0.2, and point 0.2 pretty much means this is it mixes more of this and less of shader, this other shader. So, um, let me show you. I'm gonna add it. I did translucent in the beginning, and I think it's a better choice because glossy. Gla Actually, no, glass is better. Yeah, let's go with glass. Because I want something that looks kind of like water. What I was going for was I want water, is, is the whole thing that I want. GDX is, again, a, a much better choice. And. IOQR should be 1.33, which is water. Roughness is, the rougher it is, the less reflective it gets. So let's just leave it at that at zero for now. And again, add another um, diffuse. Oh, th there might be an easier way to add these since I'm copying the same ones again and again, but I have not found that out. If you guys might tell me what it is, that'd be awesome. And let's add another glass. Um, in, in the one that's on there, it's actually using, um, what's it called? Oh, hey, look at that. It's actually changing. I know, oh, because uh, this is at the point. See, everything you do on here is reflected on here, so you can do the same thing on here, but I like this because I get to see a better map of what's going on. So uh, let's go back to color, and for that diffuse color, I want something. I believe I chose this, so let me go with something along those lines. Paste that on there, which gets me that cool looking color. That's fine. The next thing I'm going to do is. Well, first of all, I should probably. down a bit, this up, this down, just to make sure it's nice and clean, you know. And you know, this gives me like, a pretty nice looking texture, and I, I use different colors, I actually used uh, colors on here too, but that's because I was using a glossy texture, I'm going to leave it out white, and you know, you can make it a little bit more whiter to make it shinier I guess but you don't necessarily have to do that exact same thing so
so what I want to do after this is, you know, grass has a, a texture on it. So what I thought was, hmm, why don't I... Well, another thing I, I could have done is... Actually, you know what, let's try that. Grass has a texture on it, you know. It, it's never always just straight up green. And that's fine, but... Let's add a mix shader right here. And let's get another diffuse. Let's mix up for 0.5. And let's make this so we're the cooler. And let's make this a little more yellow. This is what I like. You can change everything right here, which is, uh, to me, a lot more intuitive than Blender's thing. Let's get that color mixed up 0.5. But, but, for right here, for the factoring, I'm going to get a texture. Let's get a, a Veroni texture. And let's put the color as factors for that. Make it cells. Oh, and uh, you need to... A, a vector is always good, so put that texture coordinate. Where the hell are you? Texture coordinate as you, you that's fine. You can also do generate, but this one. And let's put the scale down really low because I think we made this really small, so. Like Veroni. Let's try something else. Let's add a noise texture. Why not? I feel like noise also gives more options. So you can kind of see a little texture appearing right there, but it's not mixing as well as I was hoping. So let's turn this up a little bit. Uh, I'm getting something a little bit better. But I don't like the fact that it's so gray right now. It's, it's you know, you can see that it, the lines are very gray. What I would rather do is... Okay, it was, it was the liquid that was making it look bad. I mean, the glass. Let's try glossy instead. Let's put the color to... Alright, bring it down just a little bit. And the roughness a little bit higher because it's not going to be that reflective. I kind of like this a little bit better, the way it looks. You know, with a little bit of distortion on it. I 
and, and the weird creasing you see there, that's actually, I, I believe that's just the leaf itself messing up. But, it's fine. I actually like that. Then, you know what, that's pretty much that. And I can keep on, you know, I can add more to that. I can actually take the factor from this and add it to the factor of that right there. Make it a little bit shinier. And let me add one more thing. I like using noise a lot just because noise is more, this is more, I don't know, random compared to anything else. So. Now, gradient is very helpful for, you know, something that goes from up to down, like changing the color. And I feel like if that works properly. And this actually I like because it's, it's going from darker a lot higher at the top which is awesome it I'm not sure what happened there there we go back to rendered it's actually getting shinier at the tip Uh, it looks shinier to me. Let's hope it's actually shiny. be nice if I could rotate this out a little bit more but I'm not sure well I guess I could do add math what would I use what would I use multiply No idea what that did. Um, let's see, what else can I do? Ooh, this might actually be nice. Let's add a Fresno. Fresnel, Fres whatever. That. that made no sense, but
Man, that would have helped a lot, but whatever. Uh, converter. Go to math. And then what I want to do is get the... Not that. Oh man. Okay, well I can't really... I could do this UV and then get the value. Honestly, at this moment, I'm just completely guessing what I'm doing, and I'm just hoping whatever I do makes sense in some way to Blender, that it actually uses it. But I have a good, I, I, I have a pretty good idea that it makes no sense to Blender. So it's just, if Blender was sentient right now, it's like, dude, are you okay? Or whatever. So, anyways, that's pretty much what I, how I did this, and uh, let's just go to the other plane and add the same material but uh make this different and uh which which color is it this one i'm gonna change it to this color right here to just This one I change to uh, that color. Um, of course, I'm gonna red it. Okay. There we go. That's good enough, and that's pretty much what I did. Honestly, like I, I could go, I could have gone in and actually given this a texture, given each one of these a texture, and uh, that would have been as simple as. Just, let me switch this back is solid and I could go in here unwrap this object this very complicated object and you know honestly it's not that complicated uh, I oh, I just press U on the uh, oh, should not have joined area if I go to the UV image editor Jesus Christ, what the hell? Oh man, okay, there we go. I could take this image right here. It's actually fine. And I can use image, image, uh, actually not at UV, export UV layout, and grass to PNG. Um, yeah, I'll leave it at something that small. Usually I do smaller. My PNG for uh, uh, my PNG for or my UV for the TARDIS is like four thousand by four thousand pixels, and the only reason why I did that is because I want to put a lot of detail in that thing, and I want to put so much detail in it that you don't even think it's an image. But that's just me. So let's keep on going into this. Um, it's just so long, it's insane. There we go. What is my computer? Uh, there where is it? Where is it? Where is it? See, this was my uh, ground map, 48 megabytes. Um, I'll actually open that for you too, just so I can show you guys how I did that. But, damn it, where is it? So one of these might take a little bit longer to open up. Okay. Open image. 
Oh, yeah, this is pretty much my ground map that I did, and I, I did a lot of dumb things in here, but it's fine. If you can see, the shadows are going every which way, but I didn't care because I knew most of it was going to be hidden, and really all I needed to be seen was this area right here. And, you know, just to give it look, a look as if there was ground, something underneath that wasn't flat. So this helped a lot in that. And as you can see, the actual pixel size, this thing is massive. Not that massive, but it's pretty massive. Uh, the image size is, yeah, 496 by 496. And my TARDIS is going to be the same size or bigger. So let's just take this. And this is how big it is. Uh, let's, I think it's kind of clockwise. And you know, I could do a lot of things, but I feel like the best, the, the most, the best results you get are when you do things by yourself. And by what, what I mean by that is, if you actually spend, you know, you gotta put the, make sure you guys do this, you, you have to put this on top of the other, whatever layers you're working on so you can see what the hell you're doing. But again, what I mean by that is, Things look a lot nicer when you actually go out and draw things out yourself because it gives that, I guess, human touch to it. But you don't necessarily have to. That, that's your own choice. You can go out and get, say, um, other like images from online and add them in. That's what I did personally to the other part. I actually went out and got an image of a ground and added that in by myself and you know it looked pretty well but I did my own work to fix some things here and there so I'm adding a little bit of yellow coloration to that a bit of green Whenever you, a uh, very important part of Photoshop is when you go into here, where is it? Oh. The brush options, and you know, you can do a sh size jitter, and well, that doesn't really matter. And then, s scattering helps a lot, I just need to take the opacity down a lot more. You can also control flow, which is also very good, but... This, and again, as you saw before, leaves always have something running down the middle, so... Somewhere down there, and, and the line's usually straight, so that's why I want to make it like that, and then stroke the path, and it's too big, it's small, but it makes us good. Yet again. Oh, too big. Again, it's a lot of do, redo, do, redo, what's right, what's not right. Um, here, let's try two pixels. Stroke path. There you go. Oops, let's not delete what I just did. That's fine. Looks like that. You can double click on it and then. better and 
how to glow that shit. Just kidding. Um, yeah, I started acting weird when I'm a little bored, but this is probably one of the most boring things I've ever done. But I'm doing it for you guys, because I love Reddit, and the people on Reddit, especially our Blender, are awesome. Very nice people, indeed. So, there's a shout out for you guys. Yeah. Anyways. So there's that. Don't make it too visible. And then, um... Ooh, this is going to be a little bit harder. Alright, that's what I'm going to do for that. You know how there's like usually a little bit of weird stuff coming off the sides? Oh, I just realized I messed this up pretty badly. Oh, no, I didn't. Okay. I, I thought I got, like, part of that got cut off. and It might have, but whatever. What I can do... For that, it's just... No, actually. Let's do this. A lot easier. Again, you don't have to make it look exactly right, so you can just do this. A little layer mask. Take the gradient tool. And bring this down to like thirty percent. That's good. Whoops. Start duplicating. I remember what I told you about how I don't really give a crap about labeling my layers in Photoshop and you know I, I really don't I absolutely do not give a crap and you know if you were really working on this you'd probably rotate these layers out a little bit so they make more sense but as I've told you guys many times before actually let me turn off I don't care if I get turn off snap And I can take all of these, fuse them together, rotate them horizontally, and voila. There we go, I have that. And that's good enough for me. Uh, when you're going to save it, make sure you turn that layer off. File, save as. So it is, you know, the best choice is PNG or TIFF. PNG if you want smaller files, TIFF if you want, you know, uh, a much higher quality and you should discard the layers that's fine you don't really need layers go back to blender oh my fault forgot remember how i flipped this image before i did anything well go back flip it again and save it yes now we discard layers okay go back to blender image Open image. Uh, okay, it won't show up on here, but it, it's there. Don't worry. There, there was some, someone, like there was some sort of weird glitch. I forgot what it was, but when you render it, it does show up, and that's all. I'm, actually, that's the only one I'm gonna use. That's all I want. Actually, it might be because it's not in the nodes. Go to node editor. 
Yeah, it actually might be because of this. So, um, let me see, add node. Import node. Texture. Image texture. Grass tutorial. The color for that. It's UV. Get linear. And yeah, that's good enough. So now I should be able to. If this would leave me, thank you. I should be able to go into rendered and. Oh, well, look at that. what I did. It's coming up on there perfectly. Alright, well, now that that's done, let me, let me just shut up and show you guys what the render will look like. Let's get rid of this. Uh, wow. Um, yeah, this, the screen recording software I have is really messing with things. Let's go back here and I'm gonna do a hundred percent render and it's gonna take a very long time. I like using static because uh, it 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 uh when you finally what's it called when you do a render with static it comes out a lot nicer. Fifty samples good enough for now. All right, well, see you guys in a bit. All right, well, we're back. All right, I'm back, and this is the final render. Um, I only did this to uh, fifty passes, and uh, for some reason it took over two hours. So it's actually pretty insane that it usually does not take that long, but I'm guessing uh, the recording software and so far and other things made it go really long. Oh well. But anyways, as you can see, the, the colors, you know, it looks like grass, it's like very large grass. Um, you can't really see the texture I put on there, but again, that's why I didn't really want to put a texture to begin with, because you're not going to see it. But I could have added, you know, using the same technique, I could have added a little more detailed texture that gave it, I don't know, like, made it look like dead-looking leaves or something like that. Or more living leaves, because uh, this actually looks kind of a limish color right now, so that might not have been the best choice, but whatever works, right? But anyways, thank you guys. Um, this is my first tutorial, again. It might be a little choppy here and there, but, um... If anyone asks, or if I feel like I could make a tutorial out of something, I will definitely put one up. Well, thank you. And uh, watch out for my final TARDIS render coming up sometime later. Yeah, I'll probably send up, put up more work in progresses until then. Alright, peace out.